Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. In 1978, General Dynamics introduced a new generation of single-engine, multi-role fighter jets. The F-16 Fighting Falcon. Since then, nearly 5,000 of these versatile aircraft have been produced. Though smaller than the contemporaries like the F-14 Tomcat, the Fighting Falcon is an extremely capable aircraft with a service ceiling of 58,000 and a top speed of Mach 1.2. In fact, the F-16 is still being produced, though Lockheed Martin recently moved production from Texas to a new facility located in Greenville, South Carolina. This is where production of the latest model F-16 restarted in 2019. Of course, the F-16s Lockheed Martin produces at this new facility are not quite the same as those made in the 1970s and 80s. The new models incorporate all of the latest technology and engineering, enabling them to remain competitive against new aircraft worldwide. For instance, the Falcon variant features an improved active electronically scanned array radar, a new mission computer, and an expanded electronic warfare suite. It also features a number of cockpit improvements and a state-of-the-art collision avoidance system. Likewise, the new Greenville production location is also state-of-the-art. Here, Lockheed Martin can perform modifications, overhauls, midlife upgrades on older models, part fabrication, and new aircraft assembly. The location is particularly beneficial thanks to its proximity to Shaw Air Force Base and McIntyre Joint National Guard Base. Thanks to Lockheed Martin's partnerships with the military, they always have a place to test and evaluate new equipment. Production and testing of these new F-16s is an extensive process. Rather than using an assembly line, Aircraft are assembled at specific stations around the facility. Each station is responsible for a different system, component, or process. During assembly, various aircraft components are covered with colored protective coatings to resist corrosion, which can lead to premature failure. Different components will also be given different color coatings to make it easier to distinguish the parts of the aircraft. Of course, testing is rigorous, as it's extremely important that the airframe must be able to stand up to extreme conditions encountered during high-speed and high-altitude flight. Fortunately, the Greenville team is made up of some extremely talented engineers and assembly line operators. The Lockheed Martin facility in Fort Worth, Texas was responsible for producing the F-16 for more than 40 years. However, after the U.S. Air Force accepted the new F-35 Lightning II as its fifth-generation fighter, that location was immediately dedicated to bringing that new aircraft online. Known as Air Force Plant 4, this sprawling factory still produces several F-16 components alongside those of the new F-35. The facility dates all the way back to 1941, when it was founded to produce aircraft such as the B-24 Liberator. Over the years, the plant has undergone extensive changes in order to incorporate new manufacturing and assembly methods, including the use of robotics and other methods of digitalization. There's no mistaking that the F-35 is among the most advanced aircraft ever designed, with three variants incorporating very different capabilities. 
Where the F-35B is capable of vertical takeoffs and landings, the F-35C is designed to operate from aircraft carriers using a traditional cattle bar system. Fortunately, the sprawling 760-acre facility is well-equipped to handle the job. The production line is a mile long and features machines working hand-in-hand -hand with humans to maximize measuring accuracy, save production time, and ensure employees are kept safe. As previously mentioned, nearly 5,000 F-16s have been produced since the aircraft was introduced in 1978. But rather than retire all of these aircraft, the Air Force set about giving them one more mission. In 2013, they conducted the first test of an unmanned Falcon variant, known as the QF-16. But rather than operate as surveillance drones, these aircraft are intended to function as full-scale aerial targets during a wide range of exercises and drills. Pilots had previously relied on drones constructed out of Vietnam-era F-4 Phantoms. However, these no longer present a realistic opponent for today's more advanced aircraft. Over the course of a decade, the Air Force hopes to convert around 100 of these older F-16s into drones, a process that is taking place at Davis Mountain Air Force Base in Arizona. The aerial drone program was designed to simulate aerial combat as closely to the real thing as possible. The QF-4s used for the program date back to the early 1960s, but were converted into target drones in 1997. Capable of both manned and unmanned flight, these drones utilize real maneuvers, countermeasures, and tactics to test pilots and ground units' ability to engage a realistic foe. This is, of course, extremely helpful in situations where live weapons are being used. Typically, live fire tests can only be done with smaller drones, which does not accurately approximate real modern combat. With the QF-4 program, pilots, radar operators, and weapons controllers on the ground can experience a genuine engagement in the safest manner possible. Despite their age, the F-4s are formidable opponents. They're capable of reaching speeds as high as Mach 2.23. nearly twice that of the QF-16 fighter replacing them. They boast a ceiling of 60,000 feet and are loaded with weapons and countermeasures like chafe and flares. And while their maneuverability and avionics are lacking, the Q4s performed admirably in their targeting drone role for more than two decades.
In 2015, the last QF-4 received a send-off at Tyndall Air Force Base in Panama City, Florida. Around the same time, the U.S. Air Force announced the new QF-16 project, which made the remaining undestroyed QF-4s effectively obsolete. Fortunately, the pilots in charge of flying and maintaining these aircraft could take them for one last flight before it's decommissioned. In many cases, these planes are older than the men flying them, but many have developed an affection for the aircraft and its capabilities. Despite years of flying as a drone, this particular model was never on the receiving end of any live fire and remained in perfect operating condition. Now retired, this QF-4 will be taken out west, where it will be dismantled for scrap. This will make room for the new aerial target drones, providing a much bigger challenge for today's highly advanced offensive and defensive weapons. The F-4 Phantom had the distinction of being the most widely produced supersonic military aircraft in American aviation history before the F-16. From 1958 to 1981, some 5,200 aircraft were built. Thanks to its performances in conflicts like the Vietnam War and the First Gulf War, the Phantom has earned a reputation as one of the best dogfighting aircraft in history. Not only was it capable of dropping bombs when required, but it could carry up to 19,000 pounds of missiles, rockets, and other weapons on its nine external hardpoints. Over the years, F-4s like this one at Osan Air Force Base in Korea have been the subject of intense restoration processes. The hope is to preserve a number of these historic aircraft so that their legacies will not be lost to history. In this case, you can see the F-4 painted in a green and brown camouflage pattern. This was particularly popular during the Vietnam War. Still, restoring a heavily used aircraft like this is no easy task. Not only do the paint and corrosion need to be removed from virtually every surface, but restorers also need to find sources for decades-old parts or simply reconstruct those parts using modern tools and methods. Many of these aircraft have suffered damage of all kinds over the years, while others have been reclaimed from so-called aircraft graveyards where they are often exposed to the elements for decades at a time. Of course, nobody can argue with the final look of the newly refurbished aircraft, which is often the result of hundreds of hours of work, maintenance, and painting. Aviation technology moves incredibly quickly. What was state-of-the-art just two decades ago may now be suitable for little more than target practice. However, aircraft like the F Phantom and F-16 Fighting Falcon have proven so capable that the U.S. Air Force's best pilots and engineers repeatedly find new ways to put them to use. In the end, planes like this can always be restored and placed in a museum or other important location, 
so they can continue their mission of demonstrating air superiority for years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.